Hey everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Mariana and today we will be discussing diabetes mellitus. But before we get into the nursing care, let's take a step back and look at what the disease actually is and why it occurs, right? And to do that, we are first going to look at blood glucose over here. So blood glucose, or as you may know it, blood sugar, is the primary source of energy for our body, right? So our body will use these sugars to function on a daily basis. In most people, our body will regulate this glucose. So it extracts it from the food or drinks, right? And then it will distribute it accordingly. But there are certain people who lose control over this glucose, right? So their body no longer has control of where the glucose goes. So it doesn't go into the cells. And what happens here is that the glucose remains in the blood. So pe these people will have a high uh, level of glucose in the blood and a very low level of glucose inside the cells. Okay? And we call this problem diabetes. The way that the body regulates the amount of sugar in the blood, the blood glucose, is by two hormones, insulin and glucagon, right? Insulin will decrease the blood glucose, while glucagon will increase the blood glucose, okay? Both hormones are found in the pancreas, and the pancreas has what are called islet of Langerhans. Now, the islet of Langerhans are basically a group of cells, okay, a cluster of cells. And these islet of Langerhans have beta cells, which produce insulin, and they also have alpha cells, which produce glucagon. So, pause. Insulin brings down the blood glucose. Glucagon brings up the blood glucose, okay? Insulin will remove sugars from the blood. Glucagon will push sugars into the blood okay and the way this happens is firstly the insulin okay when insulin is produced in the pancreas by the beta cells it will attach itself with insulin receptors in the cell membranes of muscles or adipose tissue okay so insulin will attach itself to the cell membrane when glucose floats in the blood okay the insulin will suck the glucose into the cell so it will remove the glucose from the blood sucking it in into the cell right on the other hand the glucagon basically helps or encourages the liver to produce glucose and when it, pro it is produced it will push the glucose into the bloodstream right and you're gonna say why on earth does one work against the other well when you eat that is when insulin is activated so it will take it will take the sugar from the food and push it into the cells but when you are not eating when you're starving okay your body still has to function so that is when glucagon takes action and that is when it will push the sugar back into the bloodstream because there are different reasons why the sugar remains in the bloodstream, diabetes is split into different types. Let's look at the first type, which is type 1 diabetes, okay? And type 1 diabetes makes up roughly 10% of the whole diabetic population. It is mostly found in kids, okay? And what happens here is that the immune system of that person will attack the beta cells in the pancreas. So the pancreas cannot produce insulin or does not produce enough insulin. Of course, because there's no insulin, the glucose will not enter the cells, right? And then we have type 2 diabetes. What happens in type 2 diabetes is that the pancreas, the beta cells, do produce insulin, but the body pretends it doesn't even exist, okay? So what happens is that in normal cases, when the insulin is produced, it attaches to the insulin receptors, right? We said that in the beginning. The insulin receptors signal off, they activate glucose transporters. And it is with the help of these glucose transporters, which are found inside the cell, that the insulin pushes the glucose from the blood into the cell. So if the, in, in a type 2 diabetic, what happens is that the insulin attaches to the insulin receptors, but the body is like, 
I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Hmm? So it just pretends it's not there, okay? It generally just shuts it off and avoids it. And so the glucose transporters are not activated, which means that the glucose from the blood will not enter the cell, okay? And we call this insulin resistance. So, recap quickly. Type one, the body attacks the beta cells, so insulin is not produced. Type two, the body does produce insulin, but it rejects it, so insulin resistance, right? And then we have another type called gestational diabetes. This mostly happens in pregnant women in their third trimester. Most of the time, uh, they say that the hormones of the, of the pregnancy will affect the insulin or the glucagon, right? And so the mother will get a high level of glucose in her blood. This uh, usually works very similar to type 2 diabetes. And it is also a risk factor for developing type 2 diabetes later on in her life. And those are basically the three most common types of diabetes. The next step is to look at the symptoms, understanding what people with diabetes will experience, okay? The first symptom is actually polyphagia. Polyphagia is excessive eating, being hungry all the time. The reason that people with diabetes are hungry all the time is because the cells do not have any sugars in them, so they don't have energy. The body thinks that he or she is not eating enough and that is why the cells are starving so it will start to break down the muscles and the fats okay and this um, breakdown of muscle and fats for energy is going to leave the person very very hungry the second symptom is glycosuria as we know blood is filtered through the kidneys and any toxins are washed away with the urine with pee right what happens here because there's so much sugar in inside the blood the blood goes through the kidneys some of the sugar is going to spill over into the urine and so the person uh, with uncontrolled diabetes is going to have sugar in his pee right the third symptom is actually polyuria this means frequent peeing so a diabetic person will pee very frequently. And this is because sugar, the blood glucose, okay, the glucose is osmotically active. It loves water, sugar absorbs water. So the person with uh, diabetes is going to have a lot of sugar. The sugar is going to attract a lot of water and the water somehow has to go out. So he will be peeing a lot. And the fourth uh, symptom is polydipsia. Okay, polydipsia is being thirsty very frequently. Of course, this person is peeing a lot, so your body is going to feel dehydrated and you will want to drink. And those are the four main symptoms of diabetes. Diagnosing diabetes has a number of ways that can be done. I'm not going to go into too much detail for it because this video is intended for nursing students. So what you need to know are the names of the tests, okay? There is a fasting glucose test, random glucose test, there is oral uh, glucose tolerance test, HbA1c, and the C peptide tests. These are all some type of blood tests that are going to determine the level of glucose within a patient's blood, okay? And if, of course, the level of glucose is persistently high, then the patient will be diagnosed with diabetes. The risk factors to develop diabetes are different according to the type. So type 1 diabetes is mostly a genetic form of diabetes. So having an immediate family member with type 1 diabetes will most likely mean that the kids will get type 1 diabetes. Or it can also be an autoimmune disorder. Type 2 diabetes is actually caused by obesity, by lack of exercise, increased hypertension, and there is some research which suggests that smoking also re is related to type 2 diabetes. And that's it! That is the first part of the diabetic lectures. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up. I will be doing more videos about diabetic treatment and diabetic complications, such as the foot um, care in diabetes, right? So if you wanna know when I post the videos, it will be sometime this week, then subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Instagram, nurse.mariano. 
In the meantime, I have a nursing blog, thenursingjournal.com, okay? And if you want to get your study notes, everything is written there. I have made um, a lot of links to articles that might be helpful for you, so definitely check it out. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in a few days.